the afternoon version of Terp Talk Live. This is a Tuesday in College Park, our last football Tuesday for 2021. And we're here to talk pinstripe bowl, uh, Maryland recruiting a bit, and what we see with this Virginia Tech game coming up in New York City two weeks from tomorrow. I'm Wayne, and this time Bruce and Mason are not away from the camera. They're here live. Guys, I'm going to start with Bruce, who's seen a lot of Maryland football over the years. What's your excitement level to play Virginia Tech in the pinstripe ball? It's real high, and I can't wait for the game, and I'm not happy about the fact this could be so cold. But uh, minus that, I'm really excited because it seems like forever since I've been to a bowl game. I, mean, I'm, I was sitting there thinking the last one was in Detroit, right? and I didn't go to it. What was the one before that? The, when we went to California. I was there for that. Yeah, right. we all went to that. Yeah, yep. we went to that. That was at uh, Levi's Stadium. Yep. Right. Levi's, yeah. So we were there for that. We got waxed by Stanford, and, uh, but it was still fun to be there. And it'll be fun to be at, uh, being at the bowl, winning the bowl's a bonus, mm -hmm. all right? Getting there is the fun. Winning that game against Rutgers, that in essence was the season later on, right? Oh, absolutely. It was yeah, almost like a Super Bowl for it was. It was the, the Big Ten play-in game. We were in a wild card situation. But I'm going to tell you right now my opinion. Maybe you guys disagree with me. Uh, the Terps are going, to beat, are going to beat Virginia Tech. I'm in full uh, confidence. Their, their coaching staff is in disarray because of the interim coach. Uh, they've got guys, many more guys in Maryland in the portal. Uh, guys have opted not to play who are going to be drafted. Uh, they face much bigger hurdles, and our quarterback is twice as good. And that's for me, is everything. Our quarterback will generate touchdowns. We're going to score. We always do. We scored against Ohio State. And I'll ask you, Mason, you know, I meant to ask Loxy, how much of it is, is it a plus that Maryland has games against Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, three of the top 10 teams in the country, and Penn State, all right, arguably in that next tier? Even though they lost them all, the preparation level, the competition level, is off the charts. And you can throw Minnesota and Iowa into that. Right. I mean, to me, Maryland's ready for anything. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and Make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. Call Superior Tours for your trip to the Pinstripe Bowl to see the Terps on December 29th. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. Find out why clients, judges, and other lawyers call us the big dogs from the small firm, and why we've been named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country, as well as why the Daily Record, Maryland's legal newspaper, has named the Jacklets Law Group the very best, best personal injury trial firm and best civil litigation firm in the entire state. Hiring the Jacklets Law Group was the best decision anyone in our family has ever made. Who's your lawyer? The Jack Litch Law Group. Who are the big dogs? The Jack Litch Law Group. Woof! At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. And, and, and many things happen to Maryland even with all that preparation. Does playing the Hall of Fame schedule help at this point, Mason? I, I would say so. I think that you know the level of competition is, is high for Maryland. And that's one thing that when they've played that's why I thought they were going to beat Texas. That's why I thought they were going to beat West Virginia. When everybody does it, it's because look at who Maryland plays. And whether you say Maryland's a bad Big Ten team or, or a mediocre one or whatever you want to throw out, they have to play against the best teams over and over and over again. You you become better from that. Uh, now in year, whatever, six or seven in the Big Ten, at first there were a lot of injuries that came from it. Now Maryland's m more prepared from I think the strength and conditioning perspective, from the coaching perspective, and from the athletic training perspective to keep guys healthy and actually get them better through the year. Wayne, look at who Maryland lost to. 
They lost to the big four in the division. They lost to Minnesota and Iowa, who at one point, were they number two? Two. They were number two in the country. And the games they should have won needed the one win. What did they do? They won every one of them. They were 6-0. and oh. they're, they're better than Virginia Tech, in my opinion. The only common opponent you really can't judge was West Virginia. Maryland defeated them, but and West Virginia defeated Virginia Tech, but it was at West Virginia. I'm not so sure Maryland could have gone to uh, West Virginia and won. won. All right, I'm not I'm so not sure, sure about that. But the, the big battle here, you said it's not so much about winning this game. It's about winning the hearts and minds of the, the guys that Maryland wants to recruit. I just wish Frank Beamer was still there because we still owe him a, a, Boy, a butt do. whipping him yes, for what he do. did to us over the years. Yes, we do. Yeah. I, I'm not a big Virginia Tech fan. Never been Not a Virginia Tech fan. Pac-Man, was he at Virginia Tech? No, he was a West Virginia guy. West Virginia. Or okay. number seven, and he scored a touchdown in overtime as a wide receiver, I believe, to beat Maryland uh, at West Virginia once. That's Pac-Man Jones. Who was a great Who was a great defender from uh, Virginia Tech? Uh, great, well, you have numbers, a, quarterback, cornerback. Cornerback? Yeah. I don't remember. But anyway, Virginia Tech beat us pretty bad. Right. But these guys don't even know from that. Loxley barely remembers. But I do remember when Beaver kicked the field goal. They were up 35 to nothing. Remember that? Yeah, and, yeah. Right. And he called timeout. And then Ralph called three of them. Right. And then the guy kicked a 54-yard field goal or something. Something like that. All right. It was, it was the and ultimate it humiliation. It was. That was the game that gave us Stan Hollenbach as the quarterback. Jordan Steffi got knocked out. They go off of Jeremy Ricker and go to Hollenbach, and then there was a little bit of magic there. Maryland won the last couple of games, and then Stan Hollenbach takes us all the way to the Citrus Bowl the next year. Who and, do you and think? He's a, uh, and he's a great, a great contributor now, a great guy for the program. Yeah. He really is. Do you, uh, from the recruits that you know of that still have Maryland on their radar, what do you think going to a bowl game does for them? Is it? Well, I, I do think that does. And, and, you know, when you're being recruited by a program, one of the things that you always have to look at is where they're at currently. You know, you get sold on the future. That's how you have to sell recruiting because you are the future of that program. But there's also the what am I walking into right now? And from teams like Maryland and Rutgers, that's been, you know, kind of a year in and year out battle of where they're at. Rutgers has a great class right now, despite the fact they're five and seven. Maryland's had their best season under Coach Loxley right now. And I actually really like the class they brought in, but star rating wise, it's the lowest one by quite a bit right now. That, that, that will most likely change tomorrow. And speaking of tomorrow, because we get to do this all over again tomorrow, Maryland has a national signing day, early signing period press conference set for tomorrow at three. And if there's any major news out of that, we'll do a, a extra, extra pop in trip talk session after that presser um, but overall uh, i'm happy to still be here it's december we're talking about having one more football game i think maryland's gonna win and for those who are waiting for a reason to celebrate maryland getting the yankee stadium's not that tough a deal and if you've been having trouble figuring out how to get there you can call superior tours and you just saw that ad uh, up on the in, in the show so, uh, but if you didn't catch a number, Bruce, how do you reach Superior Tours? 410-602-1704, trying to fill up their bus. And uh, I know there's a few other buses around. So if you've got a little ingenuity, a few minutes to look it up, you can get there. Nothing's easier than driving up and driving home. All right? You got it. Then. All right, Wayne's got to take the dog to his mother and then pick well, up the dog afterwards. There, there's a dog. That's not it. easy. It's right or wrong? Not. No, it's not. That's One of the reasons easy. that we like uh, the Blitz so much is we always have to take care of the dog. Right. Have to you take care of the dog. All, All right, right, guys. That's it for this uh, pop-up edition Tuesday. Last one, Tuesday, football in College Park. And I want to thank our sponsors for this entire season. As usual, uh, Rick Jacklich and the folks who work with the big dog, thank you so much. And our hometown home team sponsor, Viner Four Gates Consulting. And uh, we will see you at Yankee Stadium. Good afternoon.